Hi, my name is Paul Gavin and I've been making my entire living as a freelance musician for over five years and I'm here about to do some percussion arranging uh, for a client of mine. Um, so if you're catching this on the rebroadcast, I want to welcome you to my channel and I'd love to have you hang around. Uh, if you enjoy, end up enjoying what you see here, go ahead and click like. But what we're about to do is we're going to get into me writing this music. This is what this is what I have written so far. This uh, this program that I'm writing for is a program that is uh, they're doing a Western show and they've got a small drum line. So they've got uh, four bass player, uh, four bass drummers, one snare, two snare drummers, and one tenor player. And they've got four people in the front ensemble. And so my goal is when I'm writing marching percussion music, there's always three. I want to make sure that I'm writing in enjoyable and educational information for the students to learn. I want to make sure that the band director is happy and that means that they're able to learn the music fast and that it sounds good. Um, and then the last thing is that it makes a good musical expression. And so if I accomplish all of those things, I'm happy with what I've done. Um, and so we're going to check out this music that I've got so far for this, uh, this Western show. You hear a tuba in there, and they're actually going to be humming that part. Hey, Rip City. I'm back. I got a deadline for Monday. <laughs> Then right here is going to be a front ensemble moment of some sort, and I'm probably going to be writing that during this video right here. But then... Yeah, so that's what I've got so far, um, and what I just want to do now is kind of go back and work the front ensemble parts a little bit. That's that's pretty much what I've got to finish, and then I'll go over and kind of go through all of the the um, the stickings, make sure all of those are the way I'd like for them to be, um, and kind of just go over everything one more time, like fine tooth comb, make sure everything is nice and ready to be delivered, and then I'll deliver everything. So let's take a look at what we've uh, got so far here. What we've got to work with, I should say.
this is the first part that I kind of want to give some thought. I think I might make some changes to this. Got an A flat major chord. So, when I'm writing front ensemble music, uh, I'm thinking about coloring the wind parts in. Um, and they kind of serve like the purpose that uh, in an orchestra you might think of like the strings that might serve. Um, so ad adding the colors to maybe what the woodwinds and what the brass are doing and kind of just coloring it all in. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing with this front ensemble parts. Um, a couple things that I like to think about, um, octaves are great. Um, and and uh, intervals are great uh, to really fill out the group. That's especially true when you're dealing with a smaller size group, which I'm dealing with. Um, and so I think I'm going to be adding uh, some things like that here. Let's take a look at what that might look like. I think I'm going to leave this part as it is. You know, actually, is let me make sure it's an A major chord. Yes. Mm. I actually think I might change. Let's see, we got vibes here. Let's add a fourth to all of these. Um, no, I take it back. I'm gonna change this. A six down will give me a C in my A flat major chord, and I'm not gonna have my marimba up that high. I think I'm probably happy with that. And then our next chord is an E flat chord. I've analyzed some of the chords um, up here, just so that makes it a little easier. A lot of times, what I'll do is uh, Sibelius has a feature that will analyze the chords for you nice and quick because um, I'm not always quick with that um, and so there's a resource for me to use so I'm probably going to use it even right now soon in a little bit so that's my consideration there let's go a fourth down and get some B flats in here down a six for a G. We don't need those cautionaries. So, it, so in a larger group, the marimba kind of serves as like the melody voice. But since this group is smaller and there's just gonna be one marimba player, I'm actually treating the marimba a lot more like a, uh, an accompaniment instrument, um, whereas the uh, vibraphone and the glockenspiel, those are kind of going to be like the melody instruments. I think I'll do the same and go down a six to give me the G in that chord. Mm, is that an F? Yes, it is an F chord. Um, so we'll go down the, down a fifth for the F, down a third in the vibraphone for an A, and we'll get the F in the marimba as well. Okay. Let's see how if, if we like that. Yeah, and nice smooth transitions too. Nobody's like doing any big jumps to get anywhere except for right here in the marimba, but they've got a whole quarter note worth of time to do it. So we're not just thinking creatively, we also have to think um, effectively, how is this going to affect the player and are they gonna be able to accomplish what we're asking them to do? Remember that's the 
um, the second point is making sure that the educators that are surrounding these students, well not surrounding, but working with these students, um, are not worrying about, man, are they going to be able to pull off this music? Um, and a lot of that is just doing smooth writing, which, which no one will notice. No one ever notices, oh wow, all of this smooth writing happened. Uh, but what they will notice is that the students were able to learn the music in time. Um, and that's what we want for our clients if you're writing marching percussion music for them. So I'm gonna actually choose silence all the way through here. Um, that's something that I like to do a lot in an opening statement, because usually opening statements end up being like some kind of an A, A, B phrasing. And that's the case for this too. You're gonna hear um, an A and then an A prime, if you will, of, of this sound um, twice. You can see it here. So, and then you're going to get that again here. So for this first eight bars, I'm actually going to sit the front ensemble out and then them coming in and bringing all that color is going to make a huge, huge, huge difference. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see here. That's it, that's it right there. Um, let's try that. Are there no keys? There's no key signature. I might have to put my keyboard out. I'm gonna see about this. Excuse me while I get my keyboard to behave properly. <laughs> There we go. All right, now we're in business. Mm -hmm. Oh, B flat minor chord. Yeah, that's what I want. Oh, too early, too. Here we go. So, so once I fill this in, what you're going to hear is there's just going to be so much more color in the second A statement, and that's when because, because the front ensemble didn't play in the beginning. We percussion writers, we just like to fill everything up with everything, um, and that is not necessary um, to make a good sounding musical statement. Boom, boo -doo -doom, boo -doo -doom, boo -doo -doom, Yes, that's what I want. Let's 
Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so check out this interaction right here. The glockenspiel kind of jumps ahead of what the winds are going to do. Check this out. Yeah, I love that. It's, yeah, so that's just a wonderful musical uh, conversation right there. I'm all about it. Let me scoot this down. Yeah, that's what that is. You're going, what, what is he doing? I'll show you what I'm doing. and It'll probably change your life. So if you're not aware already, you can uh, click a note um, and hit Shift uh, Option N. And Sibelius will allow you to type in new notes without changing the rhythm. Um, so here we've got a B flat minor chord. I'm going to put in... Um, let's go low, let's go the, the B flat. And then I'll give it something that leads into boo boo do 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 do. Yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go. Um, and then we'll do um, nice clean block chords with the vibraphone, I think. So again, I'm, uh, you know, just thinking about how can I add color? How can I color, color those wind, uh, those wind parts in a little bit? Just, yeah, just color them in a little bit. It's that time of year. Keep up the grind, man. Uh, good to see hear from you, Marty. We still gotta have that lunch, man. Um, I taught Marty. Um, in his first year, well, in my first year at Sickles High School, which was the first program that I ever taught at and the first program that I ever wrote music for. Um, and he is now the drumline instructor at the U for the USF drumline. And so I'm very much proud of him. And we gotta have that lunch sometime, dude. Good to see you. So what I'm liking is how all of that comes together so nicely. Everybody's got a somewhat independent part, but all of the parts line up very nicely. Check it out. just playing an F. I'm gonna go ahead and assume an F minor chord and give this a little bit more color. Mm -hmm. How about this? I think I'd like to go down to an F instead. Um, 
Um, when I'm riding, if I if the pedaling is pretty obvious, I don't worry about riding the pedaling until when I come back through and I proofread everything and everywhere where I didn't put stickings in, I put those in and put pedals in and everything like that. I take my time. It, like it's so important to keep the creative flow as uninterrupted as possible. So. You might be thinking, where are the pedals and the vibraphone? They're coming, don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Okay, let's listen to the contrast here. Check this out. Shimmers. Just floats on top and shimmers. Okay, and I really need the front ensemble to sound just 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 angry here. This sounds angry and frustrated. someone's got to play a gong right there <laughs> let me go ahead and write that in early because if I don't then I'm gonna wish wish that I had later uh, I'm gonna have our vibes player give us a big old fat gong hit right there Just gotta have a gong there. Let me let me see what else I've gotta have before I start getting getting enamored with any mallet parts. I feel like I want something pulsing. <laughs> kind of want that feeling. Maybe just rising and falling quarter notes. Is that what it is? We'll, we'll find out. Uh, Piano Eagle says, I sure wish I could compose like that. I think you can compose like that. Um, what do you do with music, Piano Eagle? Let me know. Leave me a comment. Talk at me. I think I do want to go with um, go with those rising and falling chord notes. Okay, so instead of analyzing these chords, I'm gonna copy all this, um, and I'm gonna use a plugin which will put in chord symbols right here. Um, I can't zoom into it unfortunately, but right here, if you go to your text tab. Over to the side, you can find realize chord symbols. If you click that, they will put a, um, sorry, not realize chord symbols, excuse me. Um, add chord symbols. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And I always put it down by the tuba. Um, and so it's going to go through all the chords just like that, nice and fast, and it's analyzed all of them for me so I don't have to do that work because there's no need for me to do the work, that's why, <laughs> by the way. Um, why, why, why not do it the hard way? Because the hard way is harder. 
<laughs> and I got a deadline. So if there's a way to make this move a little quicker and easier, then yeah, I'm absolutely going to use it. Um, where'd that go? Okay. Um, so if you're not aware, I'm sure you're aware, uh, but if you're not aware, chords have their, their first, third, and fifth notes. Um, and then the seventh and forward seven, nine, uh, 11 and 13, those are extensions. Um, I don't write extensions in the front ensemble very often, um, because they, they just tend to stick out just because the front ensemble texture is so bright and so strong. Um, it, it just tends to be a little bit difficult uh, on the ears to hear a lot in there. So I don't write a lot of them um, in the front ensemble, so I won't be doing that right now. Um, so I'm really just gonna be sticking to mostly up to the sevenths, and that's probably gonna do it for the most part. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's have our Glock player go back to the xylophone. With some, uh, with some, let's say medium dark mounts. And so now I've got darker textures that I can have kind of ebb and flow, which is what I'm aiming for right now. I've got a channel where I post piano covers and I just got hired to write some music for a friend. Congratulations, I love it. So what do you mean you can't compose music like this? You totally can, and it sounds like you will be. So I love it, congratulations. All right, my computer right here is running out of battery, so I've got to plug it in real quick. Give me a moment, would you? And we're back and plugged in. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so I, d I disagree. You, you clearly can write music like this, so I'm glad for you. Congratulations, Piano Eagle. Uh, what is the music that you're gonna be writing? Tell me about it. While I try to figure out what I'm gonna do with these chords. I think I'm gonna go with those rising and falling quarter notes and see how I feel about that. these correct sounds playing. There we go. Mm, actually, I would start that here. Mm-mm. B-flats and D-flat, E. Mm, transposing score. There we go, much better. Hmm. I mean, it's kind of sticking to the same notes, I think it might. Just 
Just muting some battery checks so I can hear this a little more clearly. Yeah. So if I can get those kind of going up and down, let's see, how am I gonna do it? Let's say from mezzo forte up to forte and back down. So I shouldn't have pasted that like that because that actually doesn't fit the phrasing. Let's just do one, one big growing crescendo and see how that feels. double in the woods and then let's what are some other tones that I could bring in here we got B flats and D flats so we're missing F's so I'll do the same right here and then actually an octave up as well No, that's where I've got the tam tam. That's where I got the tam tam. So I can't even have what I want. It's gonna be woods only. <laughs> that's what happens. All right. And then I think I can add some kind of eighth note arpeggiated kind of thing that'll really bring that, uh, bring a nice contrast, a nice color contrast. Let's see how that sounds the context. Yeah, just because the instruments are so loud, you can actually like barely, <laughs> barely hear, um, barely hear those uh, fun ensemble parts. Let me see. Is this something I'm able to do? No, I'm just gonna have to turn them up manually. Okay. Uh -huh. that's going on. If you're just joining me, I am um, arranging some marching percussion music for a client of mine. Um, they're marching a two snare, one tenor, four bass drum line with four members in the front ensemble. Um, and this is a Western show. Um, it's inspired by a couple drum corps shows, actually. Um, and so I'm just trying to, trying to get this music done. Got a deadline. Monday. Get it done, baby. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mm. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> I'm gonna mute the battery again. So loud, my goodness. There's a great drum set player that you may be familiar with. His name is Benny Greb. Um, and what he says is that drummers are not loud. I'm sorry, drums are not, people say like, the drums are so loud, they're so loud. But it's actually drummers that are loud. Drums don't make any sound if you, if you don't play them. And so I always think about that every, anytime anyone says, oh man, drummers are so loud. Drums aren't loud. But these drums are loud, man. These drums are loud. Actually, I feel like maybe this is a better texture than the broken stuff. Maybe I should be doing that. Oh yeah, that'll be fun between the marimba and the xylophone too. Okay, so that's that's a better way to do it. Mm. Okay, all right, and then. That's it. And then let's see if I can fill in that texture quarterly from the marimba. If you're hanging out, tell me what you got going on. Um, I'm gonna have to take this bottom note, which you can do from the filter, and bring it up an octave. Yeah, that's much better voice leading. Now we're talking. something that goes up and shimmers and I think this gong hit is gonna come back there boom Man, so this is a hard thing about having a small ensemble because I really wish that I could bring some glockenspiel in to to shimmer right there and have that nice, beautiful, high sound. Um, but I think I really need them on the on the xylophone. 
Maybe I let go of the Tam Tam here and I get that shimmer from the vibes. Mmm. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Like that part is so joyful, you see? Like I, you know, I gotta figure out something here. Literally finishing up some work listening to you, right? Did you know I'm drumming in Georgia at a theme park all summer? I think I saw something on Facebook. Man, I'm I'm so proud of you. You're one of my most accomplished students, and I'm, I'm just I'm just very much proud of you. So good work. Congratulations wherever you're playing in Georgia, and we're definitely due for that coffee that we talked about quite a while ago. But like, dude, I'm proud of you. Good work, Martin. I'm really Marty, I'm really proud of you, dude. Ah. Ah, uh, ten years deep in teaching, man. When you when you hear about a student doing well, it fills up your soul. I can't figure it out. Can you figure it out? I think maybe some arpeggiated stuff, I think, is what I'm going to go for. Let's see what happens. Boo -boo -doo -boo -doo. No, no, no. Pretty good, actually. Um, and we'll just take out the yeah, I'll take out the G sharp, the major seven, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna let go of the tan tan. Will there be consequences? Will we survive? Who knows? <sighs> I could have the Xylo switch to Glockenspiel and even, even double this part, but like I don't want hard mallets. <laughs> this is tough. Um, we'll do medium rubber mallets. It's not going to get there, though. It's not going to do it. It's not going to work. Let's see what I think about hard mallets. And then if I can survive with that, then I can actually have everything that I want. Let's see. quick switch they're gonna have to set the Glock up just right but I think I think uh, I think it'll work <laughs> I 
I'll give them that extra count and then I'll go ahead and bring this there. Have that doubled. That could be that could be really nice. Man, decisions, decisions. The, I, I like writing for a small group. I think it has a lot of wonders. Uh, but man, the different things that you sacrifice um, to to have something else. Just lots of lots of strategery, a lot of thinking. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm going to have to go without the Tam Tam. Or maybe they'll just recruit another student. Yeah, that's a solution. <laughs> Let's see. These are craft symbols. That'll, that'll do enough to get the moment to happen. We'll put that there to get that octave to happen there. And then I'm going to give the marimba a uh, mid part that's a little lower. Mm. Careful. What's the source music? Um, it's a couple of drum corps shows. Good to see you, by the way. Um, Garrett Lambert asks, uh, hey, Paul, good stuff. What's the source music? It's a couple of drum corps shows. Um, I think 2016, Carolina Crown, and then two others. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's what I want. So again, like it, it's a constant consideration, those three things, I'm always balancing those three things. Um, what's going to be educational for the students um, and what are they going to enjoy playing? Um, what are they going to be able to learn fa fast enough uh, for band directors? Because band directors always want something, everything fast and now. Um, and um, what's going to be artistically pleasing and what's going to sound good. Uh, so the, it's always a balance of those things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give the marimba player a break. I'm just going to give them some simple stuff to play. Two mallet chords, boom, 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 under the busy part for the glockenspiels, uh, glock and the vibraphone. All right, let's get that typed in. Let's do that. Let's end low. Okay, good work done here. Let's check this whole thing out. I'm probably going to change these quarter notes though, now that I've got busier xylophone mounts. You know, I think I won't, actually. That's a really nice contrast. I think I won't. Scoot this over like this. Yeah, I think I won't. I'm actually happy with that just like that. We'll change that. All right, let's see if I like that. Wow, what a, what a mood contrast. That feels furious. I, I, yeah, okay, that, that actually worked out. Okay. Oh, don't have any battery instruments on.
let's do eighth notes then. Yeah, we're cooking now. We're cooking now. It took a little while, but we're cooking. If you're a Sibelius user and you don't know, pressing R repeats everything for you. Um, and so the way I turn those from quarter notes to eighth notes is I click the quarter note, hit the eighth note, and then I press R. And it'll repeat everything for me. Um, I'm going to have to... Mm, voice leading, voice leading, voice leading, voice leading. <laughs> Am I gonna take the whole thing down? I'm not. No, they can, they can jump down. This kid's got got young legs, man. They can jump down. <laughs> take that I'll take that nice all right this next section I want to feature the front ensemble um, but I, I haven't had a creative idea to do it yet so I'm just gonna skip it I'm gonna move into this next part right here <laughs> my goodness So, since the marimba player is not going to be playing five mallets, I'm going to go ahead and reduce this down to what it's going to be. Uh, ooh, maybe you go back to the xylophone here. Actually, it'll be important for me to go ahead and make this decision for later. Man, 11.14. It's getting late, man. It's getting late. I'll just go ahead and get rid of this top octave, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. written in here is actually what was suggested by the wind arranger and he's mostly right just not playing six mallets in the high school front ensemble so <laughs> I don't know are you guys doing six mallets in your high school front ensemble No, you're not. You're not. I know you're not. <laughs> Nathan, you can go somewhere with that. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. Mm. Yeah.
actually what I should have done. I'll take it back. What I should have done is analyze those before I change them. Because um, it sounds like it's the main source of, uh, of information. That's not what I need, need court symbols. F sus seven. with a nine. Okay, great. Now I can delete all the notes. Keep the... Keep the chord symbols. All right, now we're talking. better and then I can do the same up here. This will still have to be fun. And then I will leave the B flat there for the sus chord. I'll leave the B flat and move the G up to get the 9 in there. Boom! That should be satisfactory. Same here in the vibraphone. Mm. If you haven't liked the stream already, I'd love for you to do that. It'll be a big help. Mm. Let's do this. E flats here for the sus seven chord. Don't like to write extensions in the front ensemble, but I am. Let's see if it uh, turns out. Let's see if the chords translate first. suggestions from the arranger I, I, I always accept the suggestions from the arranger as best as I can if it's possible I'll do it because um, they um, they know their intentions better than I do so no pride here except for the part where like I mean I don't know the three notes I'm not doing three notes Okay, that cleans that up perfectly. Oh, 
Okay. All together now. Okay, so this, conver this conversation between these staccato notes, there's something there for me to use. Oh, so, so I've got the battery playing the second ones. Maybe I should have the front ensemble play the first ones. Yes, that is what I should do. It's not often that the ideas come perfectly, but... Right now. now, it's also not often that you can just copy and paste the right idea into the right spot, but fortune smiles on us yet again, my friends. Let's see how that sounds. I think this would sound good in mid-range vibraphone too, so I'll go ahead and put that there. No need to put staccatos over these. This has been excellent progress. It's like 11:30, and the moment has arrived. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. If you've enjoyed this, I'd love it if you make sure you like the stream. Um, and if you have any suggestions on how I can make this more interesting, I would love for you to leave those for me. Um, I think this is the way I'm gonna be doing my YouTube videos from now on. Is just doing them live. I, I don't think that I can keep doing the video editing thing um, that I did years ago. I've just got to use my time. A little more tightly and I think the best way to do it is doing live videos um, so it's been my honor having you with me um, and I would love to uh, to continue hanging with you in the future so if you haven't subscribed already make sure you subscribe to the channel if you didn't like the video if it made a benefit if it was of benefit for you make sure you like the stream and I look forward to seeing you the next time I see you many blessings my friends have a good night bye bye <laughs>